Good afternoon, YouTube. I'm here on my lunch break. <clears throat> Just uh, taking a breather. All I'm going to say is, wow. GM has fucked up royally. Wow. You know, I'm a GM guy. I have been. They've given me lots of reasons to be a GM guy. All right? Everything I have that's GM, I don't have a problem. Well, I shouldn't say that. My, my 05 STS. It's kind of a bitch to work on. But that has a lot of German inspiration. GM has seemed to have given up on this whole um, <clears throat> design aspect, I think, these days. They have just taken parts and pieces and ideas from other manufacturers to simplify their process. Like, the, is it, this car has a Mercedes transmission in it. And about 90% of the fasteners under the hood are Torx or Allens, and it's, like, unreal. You know, American, American-made, designed, whatever. And it's all Germanized. <clears throat> and you got 01 LB7 with an 03 facelift. <clears throat> that one I ain't got a problem working on. It's genuine GM. It's... 13 mil, 15 mil, I mean, everything is just, I mean, granted, people hate metric stuff, but I don't, so I don't care, I enjoy it, it's easy to work on enough, you know, same thing with the Yukon, it's an 05 Yukon, it's got an, well, it's an 05 Silverado with an 06 LBZ, but everything just works, and it's fairly easy to work on, it's simplified, and then you get to this, 2017 1500 High Country. And I swear GM has collaborated with Ford on more than just a transmission because I, I have just spent over an hour trying to get an AC compressor mounted in this thing. <clears throat> and I'm not going to say I'm... Um, I could say it this way. I'm a mechanic by profession, all right? There's nothing I'm not used to for the most part. You can throw something new at me, and it's just like, okay, i got to work around this a little bit here or whatever, but there's nothing I can't do is what I'm saying. And uh, <clears throat> this had me screaming um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It's just a stupid design. And I know I've seen this other places, not just on GM, but uh, AC compressor has to slide over that stud, which comes out of the block. I had it out. Um, it also, what, what kind of bugs me I'm on my Duramax is this bracket for the alternator, a.k.a. Well, actually, no, yeah, the alternator is right here on a Duramax. This bracket is held on with its own bolts. Nothing mounting like the AC compressor and the alternator None of those mounting bolts hold the bracket to the block. On this engine, they've got this bolt here for the alternator. This holds the bracket on. The AC compressor bolt, two of them hold this bracket on. And I know they're trying to conserve space or whatever, and block casting and whatever else. But, man, trying to get... Both bolt holes lined up. This truck's got 195 on a 2017. Minnesota. Rust, corrosion, the typical shit. <clears throat> now, it's got the stupid metal sleeve here, like the alternator does, on the AC compressor. That alone sucks a lot of donkey balls, all right? Because <clears throat> now that thing is rusted and seized into place. There's no more moving it back and forth. And I don't think there really was even from the factory. That bitch is locked in there solid. Now, I could not get this compressor to mount onto here and the back side of the block where the bolt's hole's supposed to go through and then get this stupid stud in because you can't slide the AC compressor over the stud and then tilt it up and on over the bracket and the block. <sighs> you know, so, okay, so I got this one started first, all right? This was a second, well, this is... My second thought process, all right? I tried getting this top one in first. Mm -hmm. Tried getting this top one in first. And then swinging the bottom 
up to get this in place. Now, granted, I got it into the block casting of the block, but I could not get it to thread at all into the block. That pissed me off, all right? So then I took this bolt out, swung it up, got that one started, and then tried to beat the shit out of the compressor to get it to come up over the bracket and the block. And... <clears throat> Okay, so I got the bolt in up until where it's supposed to thread into the back side of the compressor ear, or the last ear of the compressor, where the bolt sticks through. Um, yeah, uh, that was a bitch and a half because everything's rusted, corroded. I tried grinding down the surface here. There was This ear was hanging up against the bracket, so I sanded it down on both sides. And then I tried sanding a little bit of material off that collar back there to help give me some more room or clearance to slide everything into place nicely and just get the bolt started well yeah there was no amount of adjustment that i could get easily i had to take a pry bar on the back side through behind the strut all the wiring and hoses to the back side bottom corner of the compressor lift the compressor up and this is after taking off the heat shield for the manifold because I couldn't see because there's such a large amount of gap here between the manifold and the compressor. And I was blocking my view of the the back ear there to finally get that bolt hole line up enough to get the bolt started. And even then it kind of felt like it was cross-threading, but it just went in without much effort. I mean, uh, considering the fact I used a fairly weak um, uh, electric ratchet not that one um dad got this ac delco one i don't like it it has no throttle control it's either on or off so there's no throttle it doesn't stop right away and then it just doesn't have any freaking cojones at all the battery fairly weak um doesn't hold doesn't keep a charge all that long so i bought this guy snap on high torque um this guy is actually a knuckle buster, and I'm not lying when I tell you I've busted my freaking skin open once or twice. I don't mind the cut. That's from the exhaust manifold gasket when I was putting the manifold gasket on. <clears throat> but you can see them two little notches, black notches there that are healing up finally. Uh, yeah, so I was torquing something up up in a, near the bottom of a frame rail, and a freaking bolt tightened up, and it freaking went wham with my finger, of course, you know, right right against the frame rail, but then I couldn't get my finger off the trigger fast enough, so as it stopped torquing, because the bolt's done, it frickin' went rrr, 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 and smashed my finger against the frame three times. I'm not kidding when I say this thing is an absolute knuckle buster. I was told by the, well, the smoothsman rep that uh, this is just as powerful as their air ratchets. I can probably uh, attest to that. I'm not... I had the Milwaukee one before this, with a little bit older generation, and um, it was three eighths. About it was the short head, kind of like this, and it was supposed to have what the the higher the fifty five foot pounds of torque. Well, I could tell you this thing. I think this is supposed to have like eighty five or eighty five uh, foot pounds of torque or something like that, or is it sixty? I honestly don't recall, but it's it's a freaking substantial amount. I mean, it doesn't lie. This thing holds a lot of freaking, puts down a lot of torque. And uh, you can snap a lot of small fasteners off if you are very, not very careful. And I, I couldn't really say that about my Milwaukee. My Milwaukee worked for me for quite a while until the clutch started letting go. And I'm, I know this one's already, every once in a while the clutch doesn't do exactly what I want it to do, but it does the job for the most part. So I don't have any complaints about it really um, other than there's they almost need a freaking cage around your hand as you're using this because you're going to smash it into shit as it, it torques or breaks loose. I mean, and it's already bulky enough to get it into tight places. And there's just no room for hand protection. You really have to double ham this thing to keep it under control. It's wild that much torque in tight places. It'll smash your shit, trust me. So then the other thing I ran into, I think we got Felpro gaskets for this thing. Uh, I don't remember. There's a box over there. I think it's Felpro. Um, so putting the manifold gaskets on um, the passenger side, I believe. Yeah. Mm, yep. So 
It's nice enough that the gaskets have a slot so you can put two bolts in the manifold and drop the gasket in so you don't have to sit there and manhandle the, the manifold and trying to get the gasket and the bolts all lined up all at once. That's nice. Problem I had. So the manifold has slots in the end of it, each end of it, so the bolt can slide back and forth to line up with the bolt hole, right? Okay, cool. Gasket did not. The gasket was a stationary hole drilled into the, into the gasket. And my problem was it was offset enough to where I couldn't get the bolt started. It would have had to squish the gasket in. Well, it's a metal gasket. It don't want to frickin' fold in, otherwise it's going to wrinkle. So I took a bigger drill bit and drilled the holes out. Well, I already know drilling into thin sheet metal like that tends to not go well. It's taken my time. It was going all right. But the last hole, it started catching, drilling in. So I threw the drill into reverse to uncatch the drill bit that proceeded to uh, be a mistake. Um, for some reason, the drill bit caught the gasket going backwards, which is new for me, flung the gasket around and hit my finger at a high rate of speed, and then that's how you got the frickin' slice. <clears throat> so that was a fun time. Surprisingly, didn't bleed all that bad, so... That's good, but holy Hannah, uh, just the fun time I'm having with this thing. I'm doing a little bit of everything. So truck came in, complaint, uh, belt squeak type noise. He already did belts and tensioners, all three belts, which includes the two stretch belts, which is another asinine idea. Thank you, GM, for that, it's for the vacuum pump and for the AC compressor. So I get to have the fun of doing those. I really hate stretch belts. I deleted it on my BMW 7 Series. Uh, so anyway, uh, did it do, what was I going on about? I don't know. Oh, belt squeak noise. Uh, it was at, only at idle, really, and it was underneath a valve cover. You could hear a squeaking. Squeak, 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 squeak. And you're like, hmm, that sounds great. Let me guess what that is. Lifters. Woohoo! So, what we ended up doing, obviously, we did a cam and lifters. Um, really, only one lifter had a failure. The other ones weren't bad. Uh, and I couldn't tell you which ones are which right now. Uh, 3S, everything's a mess, I know. This is the back end of the job. So, there's the lifter. Wasn't bad. Not great, obviously. So, um... That it, yeah, did the same thing with the cam, was pitting it uh, for some reason. So, And it also had a bent push rod. Where is it here? And it was really only on the one spot, and it wasn't all that bad. So it was just starting to screw everything up. So, so we did cam, lifters... And we resealed the engine head to toe, inside and out, and all around. Oh, so it has new gaskets all the way around. Oh, I'm learning so much. This is my first LS build, all right? Should be fairly simple. 6.2? No. It's just as complicated as the North Stars were when they first came out. Well, since they don't make them, since they still are, if they want to still want to call them complicated, technical, whatever. 6.2 LS... It's just as freaking complicated. It's got sensors in places it should not have sensors, and the stupid lock tabs are facing the block, or you can't really get at them. And then they're, especially on this, where everything's getting hard and dried out, getting everything to pinch and release, pff, forget about it. You don't need to do that. At least none of them broke. That's all I can say, positively. So then my next hang up here, I've had a few. Uh, what was it? Oh, I found a bent push rod. Unfortunately, after the fact, I really just kind of rushed through the job of pulling them out, stabbing them in the box. I had, well, my box here. I had them all lined up in on the box, all the rockers and lifters. I just yanked them out, slapped, stabbed them in the box, called it a day. Like I said, I don't know where everything's at right now. There it is. Because <clears throat> it's the only one that didn't go back in. How I missed that, I don't know. I literally found it and went, <gasps> Oh, son of a bitch, how did I miss that? <clears throat> well, literally, I was just yoik out of the engine and whoop, into the box. I didn't take the time to look at it, and I said it ran good enough. 
you never would have known it had a bent push rod. Um, and obviously, that was making, uh, I wonder if that wasn't what was making the squeak noise. Um, could have been the lifter too, I suppose. But I don't know, whatever. Either way, new push rod, uh, piston's fine, no damage from valves. We had the head sent out. They did do a valve job. We did valve seals. I mean, this thing should be ready to rock. We looked at a rod bearing. It looked it looked good. We looked at a main bearing. It looked good. We've used new bolts, torque, to, torque yield, all that bullshit. And uh, we didn't do ARP. He wanted everything stock. So he, I bought no parts for this thing, including oil. I didn't buy anything for this engine. He bought everything, OEM. So it is back to spec OEM. They've torqued everything to spec. And uh, so this should be interesting. Like I said, it's my first LS. And if you're wondering what that guy is, that's a high-pressure fuel pump. And the ra fuel rails sit underneath the intake manifold. And that's, you know, okay, I, I guess, if we have to. So then we're also looking at these injector seals that apparently were issues. I watched a video. I had to figure out how the hell to install these things. I figured they were just hard rubber. No, they're plastic, so that's great, too. So cut them off, no big deal. But... uh yeah, what a fun freaking project this is going to be. Apparently on the older generations of the 6.2 or 5.3 maybe. I don't know if 5.3's got high fuel pressure or not. Never seen one. But anyway, that uh, they've got this, this washer here which sits up at the top. That's supposed to seal this area off because this area was getting corroded into the cylinder head and people were either breaking injectors or wrecking cylinder heads or injectors or something like that. It's found that dumb. <clears throat> but as I went to install these new stupid plastic seals, um, yeah, I can't do that by hand at all. So they have a special tool that you slip over the tip of the injector and you freaking... <sighs> That's another... Freaking stupid idea. I doubt GM came up with it. That has to be, I mean, whoever the hell came up with that. I mean, someone needs to get shot for this shit. This is just stupid. I thought GM and the LS was supposed to be simplicity and, and no-brainer, and this is just getting stupid now. Oh, you have a specialty tool for this and a specialty tool for that, and you're looking through the freaking manual on... I'm putting this thing back together, and it's saying, use specialty to a black, and use specialty to a black. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Why isn't this just nuts and bolts anymore? Why do I need to have frickin' this, that, and the other? I used a, uh, a Vim torque angle meter I bought. I bought it a few years ago. I haven't really been able to use it. This doesn't come with it. That's just fine in there. Um... But anyway, I bought this from Cornwell. Uh, Cornwell deals a lot in Vim now. And because uh, well, I'm at work trying to do cylinder head bolts. No, it's, it's really nice, I believe. So what, what International's done is, on well, at least on the 2010 DTs, they uh, torque in cylinder head bolts. It's a really high torque, like 170-some foot-pounds or something like that. I honestly don't remember. There's three torque sequences you go through, and then it's torqued to, I think, 90 degrees, and then maybe another 90 after that. I honestly don't recall. Um, I said maybe it's just 90 degrees. It's very simple, all right, for torque-to-yield bolts. GM, on the other hand, here, torque them to 59 foot-pounds, and then rotate them 100 and... 25 degrees or something dumb and then who knows what else i don't remember it's like i said my first one but so this actually worked very very well the vim tool for doing that with the engine out because uh doing it with an engine in i just don't have enough swing on the internationals to freaking you know i gotta stop ratchet back come back again I just don't like doing that when you're doing torque to yield i mean you already sketchy enough feeling a bolt stretching I really don't want to stop and then throw the angle off any kind of, you know, 
Oh, I don't know. I've, it's just not my cup of tea, but it does work. It, it worked great. It's like I said, it's torque and angle, inch pound, foot pound. It did everything from 18 foot pound that I did to um, whatever the stupid crank bolt was, 230 some. Well, the old to get the crank pulley on, I did spec. All right, use the old bolt, torque her down to 300 foot pounds. That's what it went up to, and then. Uh, now, um, you know, old bolt, what was it? Was that 59 foot pounds back off 360 degrees? And then, no, sorry. Was it, the hell was it? 220 or 230 foot pounds back off 180 degrees and then torque to 59 foot pounds. And then you do like 125 degrees after that. Like what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, what was backing off 360 degrees do? And he already torqued it to 200 some foot pounds. What, what sense does this make? Man, engineers are just getting stupid. I'm telling you. Holy. Now we got my BMW in shambles at the moment doing a rack and pinion. Looks like a lot. It's not really a lot. So I can't complain at least. I'm, I can't wait to get it back together. I started doing this and then. That got dropped off. And this thing has just been a pain in my ass the entire time I, it has been here. Inside the engine went perfectly fine. No complaints, no nothing. I mean, that's just simple as can be for the most part. It's just rotating assembly, nuts and bolts. Everything around the engine, on the other hand, now that was just a fight. There's, like, no room in here at all for any of your arms, tools, anything. Uh, they really crammed this shit in here, and it is just pissing me off. So the dowel pins for the transmission, it took me over an hour just to separate the transmission. It had me checking like nine times. Did I freaking forget a bolt holding this thing or what? I don't want to hear a, you know, and the freaking bell housing cracks because I forgot a magic bolt. So I was Googling what the transmission looked like. How many bolt holes are there? And I went around feeling, feeling, feeling because you can't see the top ones. You can only feel them. And then, uh, yeah, just uh, the dowel pins were rusted enough, and there's just enough corrosion on the frickin' transmission, the bell housing. To... I had my four foot or three foot, whatever the hell, that guy trying to pry the whole frickin' transmission from the engine. It wasn't doing a damn thing. So what I ended up doing, and because I, I, I'm a one-man band, that's all I can say. I had my pry bar stuffed in here against the bell housing and the block and uh, ratchet strap. Ratchet strap that bitch back. It was bent and uh, took Big Nasty's bigger brother, I call it, because for those that know what I'm talking about, we've got Astro's biggest air hammer they offer, which is like a 498 shank, which is, oh, what's the standard, 416? Um, so this is Thor. It's the biggest air hammer you can pretty much get. <clears throat> and uh, I was rattling against the bell housing on each side with this to get the bitch to pop loose. And it still took a good 10, 15 minutes per uh, total, both sides, to get the thing to pop off the dowel pins enough. That pissed me off. That's how I knew I was in for a real treat. And then getting all the electrical disconnected along the passenger side and driver's side, which there's not a lot on the driver's side, but that knock sensor back in here is in such a wonderful spot, which I got to put that... I did that already. I don't know. And then the freaking clip for the block heater, that's in a wonderful spot. You can't really get your tools in there to get the clip to release. And... Uh, and I really love this one, and this is what i got to fix, and this pisses me off because this shouldn't have happened, and I don't know how it did. Oh, so as you come in here, maybe, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Like I said, I had to take the heat shield off in order to even see the back of the compressor. Um, my phone will work. There it is. Aha, look at the connector. You see what I see? Focus, focus, focus. Mm, it's not gonna. Oh, you son of a bitch. There you go. Do you see what I see now? Little bits of copper. Fucker. 
So now I gotta get that connector off, which is in such a wonderful spot, because there's no way you're getting to it through here, right? Am I right? Between the power steering, the AC, or not, sorry, not power steering. The, uh, all the battery cables, the AC, and the tranny cooler lines, and then the ground cable, and so I'm gonna have to go up through the exhaust, past the starter, hopefully I can get my hand in there far enough to get that stinking thing unplugged. I have to figure out how to patch that back together. That's how I, what I don't know what happened, because it was perfectly fine when I plugged it in. Ugh. There's more than enough frickin' shit on this truck to just piss a guy off, which just brings me back to what I'm saying. I guarantee you there is more Ford collaboration on the rest of this shit than there should be. Or other makes and models of vehicles. Maybe there's bits of BMW and bits of Mercedes and bits of Cadillac and bits of this and that. And yes, I know Cadillac's GM, but it's kind of like Cadillac does their own thing now. So, so that's like a totally different entity almost. <clears throat> so, anyway, ball joints were fun. That was... I mean, I'm not saying it was bad. It really wasn't bad, but it was. It's, it's a learning curve. It's the first time I'm coming across this stuff, <clears throat> where you have to deflower the ball joint in order to get it out. Because what they do is pop this up, press it in, but then they fold these edges over in like a flower petal along the tops, and then you got to punch it back in in order to get the ball joint to pop through and that bitch was in there tight and this is pretty much a two-piece uh control arm there's a gap here that's the lower piece that's the upper piece like for me when i do ford ball joints at work uh e-series f-series it's really freaking nice because both ball joints are part of the knuckle and i can um this is the one time i can say that i enjoy working on a ford all right now granted I prefer working on two-wheel drive F-Series, otherwise E-Series, there's only two-wheel drive, so... Because if I gotta pull apart the stupid vacuum hub assembly bullshit on a F-Series, that sucks ass. That I don't have a tool for the CO, and, you know, you're... I don't know, I can never get that stupid system to work after it's been ripped apart anyway. It probably doesn't work when you pull it apart anyway, so... Or before you ripped it apart, because it's stupid vacuum shit. Anyway, <clears throat> so... And I know there's going to be guys that comment, oh, yeah, series fucking four-wheel drive work perfect. <laughs> Whatever. Just saying. It's it's a shitty, stupid, archaic design that should have gone away a long time ago. Anyway, so, um, where else was I? I don't know. Something about ball joints. I don't care. I'm tired. I'm, <laughs> I'm not defeated. I'm winning. But this is still kicking my ass a bit, and it, it just definitely wasn't fun. Oh, so what I was saying, you know, ball joints in the knuckle, I usually take this freaking air hammer, stab it on top of there, and just fucking, and then it just knocks it right the heck out without much effort. It's awesome. Love doing that. Quick and easy. And I did that with this, but it almost looked like it started popping this lower piece of metal down, which was like, uh-oh. But uh, I don't think it did uh, all that bad. So, um, it really makes it easy for doing upper and lower ball joints all at once, where I couldn't do the air hammer on the upper, because, well, this is in here just kind of flopping around, so to speak, so I had to actually use my press. Um, usually I only use the press to press them in, not to press them out, so... But that's just me. Uh, but maybe it's the same thing on GM. I haven't done ball joints on my trucks in forever, so... Anyway, um, yeah, there's a lot going on here. I am not thrilled. Just especially putting the radiator back together. That that had me swearing for a while. There's a lot of little pieces in there that are just stupid. And what little pieces are you even talking about? You don't know what the hell you're talking about. See, there's this bottom tray right there you can see. Right there. That bottom tray that the condenser sits on but yet the condenser is clipped onto the radiator. And then there's like a little rubber seal, which uh, I don't think one's going to see it. I clipped the seal. I don't know if I can get my finger in there. Right at the bottom of the condenser. No, you're not going to see it. So there's a, there's a bottom, there's a lip, because it curves up. If you look, on t closest to me, the plastic 
shield thing I'm talking about curves up on the back and curves up on the front. Well, I put the stupid little seal on the front side because I didn't know where the hell it went because everything was just laying in the bottom of the, the core support. And I was like, what the hell is, where is this go? What the hell? And then they've got a freaking... Oh, if I move this stuff, maybe you can see some of what I'm talking about. Oh, what a treat this truck has been. It's just had me swearing left and right. I, I, I kept telling everybody at work, I'm like, I have never in my life sworn more at a GM in one day. Or, I screwed that up. Of course I did. Um, I swore more at a GM in one day than I have at all of them in my entire life. This is fucked up. So anyway, they got this like seal here, which I understand and I get, and it clips onto this shroud. But there's also a little bitty one way at the bottom on that bottom. It's pretty much a duplicate of this shield right here, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, so I just clipped it right to the thing, but that kept popping off. And then these end pieces on the condenser end wings, not the metal wing, the plastic, the plastic deflector piece right here. This like clips onto the end of the condenser. And I can tell you that was a bitch on its own. This side was just fine. That side I could not get to clip to the condenser and stay clipped. It kept popping off and it has to clip onto the lower shroud thing. And I said, oh, oh, and I'm like, Trying to get the transmit, trying to get the radiator set in here. It's dumping tranny fluid on me. I'm getting pissed, really, really pissed. Want to also know another fun fact that really has me questioning whether GM is still GM or if it's just a conglomerate of other brands, makes, and models put together. Your AC condenser on this truck is also your transmission cooler. Don't believe me? Here's your tranny cooler line, all right? Of course, this is going to be hard to see over here, probably. Maybe not. So, those are your AC lines right there. Here's your tranny cooler line. They both run to the same damn thing. Like, it's really hard to show you. Can, so, okay, AC lines. Come up top. Tranny line. And you want to know what's also fun? Oh, I should have just done this. Yeah, there's no separate condenser, no nothing. AC line. Tranny cooler line, same unit. Tell me that's not going to be a mistake at some point. Hey, Louise. <laughs> and on top of it, this has that one, two, three, four YF bullshit for Freon. So I couldn't even bring the system down because so I don't have a machine for that. Apparently, this was offered with one, two, three, four YF or R134. So why? They did this, I don't know. Apparently they don't use 1234YF anymore in manufacturing. Or... So I was told I could be wrong. But that's just what I was told. Because they were finding out that that was flammable in, in, in cases of accidents. Something like that. So, yeah. Oh, so much fun. It is not. This truck has made me work for every MFN penny that I'm getting out of this job. Now, I quoted him book time. Book time was 24.6 hours to pull the engine out, do all the work, put it back in. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to go overboard on it. I'm, uh, he said figure, he was going to figure 30. And uh, I don't. And that was before he told me he was going to do ball joints, too. So hopefully we're still in the ballpark of 30 to 36, something like that. I don't know what book time on ball joints is, but... I don't know, but uh, it's definitely going to be in that probably 30 to 35 range of hours into this thing. And I, I have far many more hours than that into it, but I said I don't charge for learning, all right? <clears throat> I'm not going to charge a customer buku hours because it took me forever to figure something out, and I don't think so. Now, if the job is complicated because of rust and or corrosion, then that constitutes the necessity to up the hours and a, hey, this truck is freaking, it was an absolute piece of shit to work on. I never want to see it again in my life. Um, I did the work. The work is done good. No complaints. You're happy. I'm happy. Get it the fuck out of my sight. And I never want to see it again, ever. Which is odd because I'll see this truck pretty much every day because he drives it to work. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah. 
Uh, anyway, this should be loads of fun. It's what I said when I uh, started the job. I wasn't really being sarcastic. I just figured, yeah, this should be fairly simple. It's GMLS. What all? What is? What all is there to this? That was a mistake. I should have uh, never said those words because I am eating those words. What a nightmare! It's more like it. So, but no. Can't wait to fire it up, but I'm waiting on my tool for my injector seals. So, anyway, that's about it for I got for a rant. Uh, this has an 8-speed transmission, if anybody's wondering. So, I don't know who it would be, but... Yeah, so I got the 6-liter pulled out of my Yukon. Actually, I take that back. I don't know why I said that. I've got a 6-liter on an engine stand for my Yukon here. Been sitting here for a long time now, probably a good two, three, four months, something like that. And uh, don't mind the building materials that are for my bathroom. That bathroom to be in here. So I think I did a video. I know I did a video on this already. Whether it got uploaded or not, I don't know. Can you tell me something that that you notice? Like holy shamoli, this thing's a freaking nasty piece of shit. <clears throat> I mean, it's just really dirty in here. Um, so apparently this engine ran really, really good according to the junkyard I got it from, which I, well, I'm not going to doubt, I'm not going to doubt, but something tells me they didn't do a uh, recommended uh, time frame on oil changes. I don't know. It's just a hunch, but, uh, actually cam don't look too bad. So might not have to do a cam. I just don't know what cam bearings look like, but we're going to find out. So... I was resealing this engine. I bought it, said, yep, sure, yeah, sure, it runs great, I trust you, all right. Pull the oil pan off, going to reseal upper and lower oil pan. I think this is two-piece. I thought it was. I don't know, it might not be. It's been a long time since I pulled it apart, but I went to pull the crank pulley off so I could do the front cover as well. Crank moved in and out a lot. Not quite that much, but enough, almost a quarter inch. Or eighth inch, I don't remember. It's a lot. Uh, it should not have. It should not have that movement, which tells me the thrust bearing on the middle main bearing here is shot. So I will be doing. Uh, I got to pull heads off. In theory, I will be doing um, rod bearings, main bearings, maybe cam bearings. I don't know. They said this and the truck that pulled this out have had over 300,000 on it. I believe them. I don't know why, but I believe them. Uh, whether it ran good, I, I'm not going to say I believe them. I did. I was hoping. And uh, maybe it did. I don't know. Never had it fired up. But that broken manifold bolts, they're like, yeah, it sounded really, really good. I don't know how it did because I think I got well, this side's not the bad side. Got one over here, but I think I got three over here. Yep. One there, one there, and one there. So three broken bolts on that side and tell me the engine's not really, really good. Okay. I'm not taking your word for it. But anyway. I was saying I was probably just, uh rings, pistons. That's assuming there's not a massive lip on the top of the cylinder once I get the heads off. Um, so this project gives me the hopes of getting this one done. This one's been sitting on the sideline. I was hoping to make money on this thing. Uh, bought it. They overheated it severely to the point where it locked up at some point. And now it has so much blow-by that it pushes oil out the dipstick tube. Whoops, the dipstick tube. And, uh, ooh, that was loud. And the interior's pretty much mint on this thing. And, of course, it's got Minnesota rust on the rockers and fenders. But interior's pretty much mint in this thing um and the rest of it's not in bad shape it's fully loaded sunroof third row seating um whatever but uh so yeah so much fun um i just assumed this engine was just going to be junk because it's got so much blow by um but we may end up boring that one out as far as i know to make it right we may end up doing the same thing to this one and just having a six liter on hand or fixing it up and selling the six you know getting this board out built up and a little bit of power into her a little bigger cam something i don't know just thoughts ideas plans i just don't know how much built engines are going for next thing you know you got 
two or three grand into a motor, boring it out and doing everything. And <sighs> what's it worth? You know, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I got a five, three here. This one's got two thirty on it. Uh, and it purrs like a kitten, even though it's got broken manifold bolts. Um, it run, you know, runs like a kitten. So, but the body's, the frame's junk, but not much I can, I'm going to do about that. Uh, now that I know the transmission's bad on that as well, there's no way I'm doing, going with the full, I was just going to throw a frame under it. Yeah, just throw a frame. But then my charger, uh, 2014 V6 all-wheel drive charger, uh, they ran into something, over something, smashed the subframe into the oil pan, and uh, so I had to replace the upper oil pan, the subframe, that set all the airbags off and tensioners. So, uh, next step's getting into the frame shop, making sure we don't need any framework, because there is a slight little wrinkle, it's probably about that big, going back, I don't know, I don't know, everything seems okay, but, you know, put it on the frame rack, we'll see that's under two grand or three grand um, three grand's pushing it but if it's under two grand we'll be golden get that going if it costs nothing it doesn't need framework awesome perfect love it so anyway i got a lot of, <laughs> a lot of projects uh i got a transmission for my seville needs to go in and then i can do valve covers on it water pump i already did motor mount um Getting a lot of needs front struts, getting alignment, be done with it. And tires, needs tires. And that'll probably need matching tires, get the rims straightened. I mean, there's there's a list on that. This guy needs valve cover. A, uh, the hell, eccentric shaft position sensor. And uh, then there's just a lot of metal in the oil. And I don't know where that's coming from. And it runs good until the sensor acts up and then it starts, like, freaking loping at idle but uh otherwise for the most part it drives fine it needs front struts as well it's completely shot you know, two of them nose to nose completely shot struts completely shot uh sts doesn't need much nothing really um uh, oh i shouldn't say that it needs an evap sensor other than that oh, did I, I don't know if anybody's seen my ah, i did a video on it i just never uploaded it that's the problem i do all these videos and don't upload them but i got a six point blow 06 F350, I figured I could make potentially, I wanted to get it going, that's what I wanted to do, uh, but they they had an, they had the injectors and oil rails off, sitting there, rain came down the cowl and into one of the cylinder bores and flooded the engine, had a gallon of oil, sorry, a gallon of water in the oil, and uh, yeah, no good, so... I flooded it with PB Blaster, WD-40, Croil, just let her sit and soak. And uh, I haven't done anything with it since, and uh, I highly doubt that it's really going to be any good. I'm sure that cylinder is just dicked. So even though it's rainwater, still a lot of rust. I'm sure the compression, even if it does spin over, if it did run in theory, it's probably going to have pretty low compression on that cylinder. So... And to make that right, it's already got head, head studs, EGR, cooler delete, all that happy stuff. Uh, you're probably 25 to 3 grand in doing the cylinder heads with the O-rings in them to bite onto the head gasket. And injectors and well, while you're in there, I don't know if I do oil cooler too. And then uh, I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Next thing you know, you're 4 grand into an engine. It ain't worth all that much. <laughs> it's just stupid because trying to find a use a good use six liter. I mean, I don't care if it's got blown heads, but if it's got if it runs has, you know, even in theory even compression uh, with non blown heads, then um, so they're just freaking expensive, like twelve hundred dollars. Are you you freaking kidding me? Twelve hundred dollars for a six liter, one of the world's most hated diesels besides the six four. And uh, you're telling me I got to pay $1,200 for it? I don't think so. It's just like, uh, I shouldn't say that. North Stars aren't too bad. I don't know. Even then, those are almost $1,000 for a North Star. Are you serious? You could potentially buy one with blown head gaskets from a junkyard. So, 
I don't know. I'm going to take another break, even though I was on my break. It's nice about working for yourself. I'm just going to go take a break. The guy's busy this weekend anyway. I've only had it for two weeks. Because we've been waiting on parts that he ordered. And then the push rod that sent me back two days. Well, I wouldn't say two days. I'm working on this after work, and he's fine with it. He's okay with that. He just wants it back as soon as humanly possible, but done right at the same time. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it right after work. It's the weekend right now. It's actually Sunday afternoon, so it is what it is, but I'm going to tell him my tool won't be here till Monday for them fucking injectors. So, otherwise I would have had it fired up yesterday. That was my main goal, to get it fired up and make sure everything's peachy peen, peachy keen, before we uh, proceed with all the knick-knacky little details. Well, now I'm doing the knick-knacky details to fill time, so. Just praying. All is well. It'll run good. No issues. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. God bless.